sitting here with Janice Bindel, a matchmaker who's been in the business for over 20 years and has helped couples match up, which have resulted in almost 1,000 marriages. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks. Men come looking to you for a wife. Why do people need a matchmaker? People need to outsource people if they're very serious about meeting somebody. What I do, nobody can do. Nobody can do it. I will leave no stone unturned until I find a guy, his wife. And my net is a lot wider than theirs. I average probably somewhere between 22 and 2,800 women a month coming to me and applying mm -hmm. to see if they fit into the profile of what my clients are looking for. So you don't just match how well people look together or... What do you look for exactly when you're looking for a match? Well, I own the minds of men. Men are looking for, in my mind, I call it the four Bs. Beauty, brains, body, and balance. Then I leave the rest up to chemistry in the universe. Hmm. Men are very visual. They fall in love through their eyes. Women fall in love through their ears. So for men, it's all about, what does she look like? Is she thin? Is she smart? Does she have a brain? I mean, it's a multitude of questions. So they come to me because I do the editing for them. I'm not a dating service. I don't fit a square peg into a round hole. Obviously, attraction is a very important component. Mandatory. Mandatory. Men have an allergy to fat. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if he has a belly. It doesn't matter if he's short and bald. It's irrelevant. Men are visual, and attraction is number one. So what do you find to be specific qualities between two people when you're matching them? Is there anything specific or? Well, I have an uncanny sixth sense that I have been gifted with. 15% of my clients get married to their first introduction. You want to talk about scary? That's amazing. No, it's scary. It's really scary. That's huge. I That's introduce cool. people based on what the man tells me he's looking for, what I think he should be with, mm -hmm. and knowing the man inside and out because I spend a lot of time with my clients. And then, obviously, the description and the profile of the woman. A woman has to fit into the profile of what my client is looking for in order for me to match her. Mm -hmm. I'm not a dating service. It's not about the fact that, oh, he's single. She She's single, he's Christian, she's Christian, or he's Jewish, she's Jewish, irrelevant. He wears pants, she wears a skirt, he has a pulse, she needs a date, let them go out and have a good time. That's not what I do. My success rate and my integrity speak for itself. My clients are mostly matched by their third introduction. That's pretty my Wow, favorite. that's great. You don't waste any time. No, I don't. <laughs> Some men think that um, having wealth is enough to meet the woman of their dreams. What do you think about that? Well, I don't deal with women that are gold diggers. I can smell them a mile away. So it's not about how much money a guy has. Those are sort of, that's an old wives' tale. Men are after a woman to get into her pants, and women are after a man for his wallet. That's so old, that's older than I am. And that's a long time ago. <laughs> even though matchmaking is a multi-billion dollar business, and some men even offer you six figures to be a client of yours, yet sometimes you'll even reject them. Well, I refuse 75% of the women that I meet and I refuse a very small percentage of the men I meet. Because I work basically through referral, the men would have to be really pretty bad in order for me to refuse them. What's bad? Well, rude, arrogant. I go out on simulated dates every day of the week. I'm at breakfast, lunches, and dinners with a man, a potential client, mm -hmm. to really be judgmental on him. Part of the test is the restaurant he picks, how he treats me, how he treats the waiter. Is he drinking? Is he leaving to have a cigarette? Is he on his Blackberry? I mean, I'm on a date with him, so I'm really being very judgmental on how he's behaving. So if I don't like the way he behaves with me, why would I ever take him on as a client and that's how he would behave with a potential wife? No. Or if I think that he's workable, I'll take him on and then my team will go ahead and redo him from head to toe. <laughs> So a man doesn't just have to have a job and a home and things like that, but he need, really needs to have good character. He has to have good character. He has to have integrity. He has to be funny. He has to. I have to like him in order to work with him. I'm very hands-on. I'm very one-on-one. -on -one. I really work 25-8. And so I'm with the man a lot, and I have to like him in order to be working with him. Mm -hmm. And about finding matches for your clients, you actually have a team of people actively going out and looking for people. 
Yes. What kind of qualities stick out to you? Like, how do you pick somebody out of a crowd? I hate to say it, but what looks. First, first, mm -hmm. because obviously after I get past the looks, I have to know if they're well-spoken, I have to know if they're articulate, I have to know if they're a nice person. I'm obviously looking for pretty skin, pretty hair, a nice smile, nice eyes, a sense of style. I mean, you know, men's lists are very, very long. But the first thing that I'm attracted to if I'm at a benefit or if I'm at a hair salon or if I'm in an airport or a train station or a nail salon or shopping, I mean, wherever I am, the first thing I'm looking at is, oh my God, she's perfect perfect for him. I know his type. Done. And then I go up to her. And then I guess sometimes after talking with them, you find, eh, this doesn't, doesn't Unfortunately, sometimes after I approach somebody, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And um, how about longevity? Do you know about the marriages you've helped with To them? my knowledge, I have not heard about any couples that have gotten divorced. I'm up to just under a thousand couples. I actually, any minute will be right there, I hope. Um, to my knowledge, there are no divorces. There are lots and lots and lots and lots of babies, but I do not think there are any divorces, which is pretty wild because the statistics are against me, not with me. Right. But I guess because I introduce people to their real soulmates and they're not really young in their low 20s, they tend to know what they want, and I'm beyond good at what I do, so you put the two together, and you have a perfect match. Wow. A lot more women come to you than men, yet only about one out of four women actually get to meet men, or actually get matched? Or? Well, it really depends. Obviously, there's two million more single women in almost every major cosmopolitan city than there are men. But at the end of the day, my clients are men, so of course I meet more women because there's more women out there. Mm -hmm. But again, the woman has to fit into the profile of what my client is looking for right. in order for me to match her. Okay. Is there any advice that you can give to women who aren't so lucky? Well, you know, the bottom line is, is that I tell women to be realistic with their expectations of what they're looking for. I mean, look in the mirror and don't let it be a magic mirror. Don't lie about your age and don't be unrealistic with your expectations. That's not going to get you anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I guess the long and short of it is when you're seeking romance, attraction really isn't enough, uh, money isn't enough, there are so many different factors. We really need to have the help of somebody else, it seems like, in looking for love. You know what it is? People in today's day and age are very career-driven in most major cities. I'm headquartered in New York City. So obviously, people are always rushing, people are working, people are busy. And in order to meet somebody, if you're not in the right place at the right time, it's not going to happen. And that's why we need your help. <laughs> well, you know, matchmaking is a $21 billion industry. Now, that's including all all the online, obviously, components of it, which mm -hmm. probably make up a lot of that, 21 billion, so I've been told. But at the end of the day, what I do is so needed, and you can't put a price on what I do. Love is recession-proof. I mean, I've brought a lot of very happy couples together and a lot of babies into this world. That's great. So thank you so much, Janice. Um, My pleasure. True love is out there. He or she might be one in a million, but that's where a matchmaker can help. Thank you so much for talking with me. Thanks.